Hel Hello, everyone. So I've got a an interview for you guys today, something a, a bit of fun. Uh, this one was recommended to me by At The Speed Of Shadow, a good friend, Ernie. He sent me an email and, and showed me a video. And he says, Paul, I think you should check this out. It's got the hat man in it. I think you'll find it interesting. And, you know, I, I watched this video. It's like an hour long. And I, I was blown away by just this entire underground subculture that existed dedicated to a uh, a hay fever of all things uh, tablet and people getting in touch with interdimensional beings and more specifically the hat man and those who are regular listeners to my channel will know you know we've discussed the hat man at length here and we have our own connections and our own theorizations and speculations on just who this elusive mysterious character is so when i discovered that people are communing with this this thing regularly by taking copious amounts of hay fever tablets, I, I just I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I, I reached out to the creator of this video. Um, it's an amazing video. It's, it's got a wealth of views right now. It's become incredibly popular for, for good reason. And I just got in touch with the guy and I said, mate, we, we have to talk about this. And he was kind enough to join me. So here he is, Cryptid Candy. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Honestly, thank you, thank you for having me. No, 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 no problem. I say how are I say how are you guys? Like as if they're gonna respond. No, no, I'm just talking to you. You know, I'm. This is just me. Forget, forget about the chat. But yeah, no, I'm. I'm really good. Go ahead. No, I'm just. You know, thank you for for including including me in all this and. Glad to do a deep dive with you. I mean, I have I have a lot to say about this topic. So absolutely, that's what I want to hear. Right. Well, wonderful. Well, first of all, let's just start off uh, just so people have a bit of context about who you are, what your channel is, what got you into, and then I think we can segue into getting deep into the video itself. So, if you want to introduce yourself, let the guys know where you come from and what your channel is and what you do. Yeah, I go by the name of Candy on YouTube. Uh, YouTube and uh, uh, I've just been like obsessed with the paranormal for all my life pretty much and I just started a YouTube channel on on Halloween of 22 so I just started this channel not to, almost like coming on a year mm -hmm. and, um, you know um, I've always wanted to do a video on the hat man because as a kid I saw the hat, I had a hat man encounter of my own being around seven to nine years old so I kind of always wanted to do a video on the hat man. Once I decided to do the video on the hat man, that when I started realizing that there was, first of all, you know, when you look at traditional hat man research, it's, you know, shadow entity, sleep paralysis, things of that nature. But when I turned to Reddit and I started looking through Reddit forums about like the hat man and, and you know, it, it always be integral with, with, can I, can I say the word? I know you told me that it's not a, um let's just call them hay fever tablets yeah <laughs> let's not say the key word yeah just so you guys know um gotta remember this is gonna be kind of hard but <laughs> yeah. so when i turned to reddit um it was that's all i saw it was like the hat man and these tablets i was like that's interesting so i turned to youtube because as you do when you're going to make a youtube channel you go look at what else other people have put out there go to youtube there's no videos on this and i'm like that is crazy I, um, there are some trip report videos where they mention that, you know, that people like to uh, make videos on trip reports, but there's no deep dive on this subject. So I was like, okay, let me do that, you know? And this was um, my first Hatman video called Seeing the Hatman, the challenge. And um, that video took off. I mean, that video now has 1.4 million views, and I didn't expect that. Um, and but I realized that there's a lack of videos on this topic. And so that's kind of why I'm, you know, trying to go a little deeper on those topics because there's just a lack of information on that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this is, it's such an obscure way of viewing the hat man. I've just, I've just never seen it before. So you've, you've definitely tapped into like a hidden niche to do this, this figure. Cause you know, there are authors who have written books about the hat man decades ago. You know, this is a, this is an old school demon, if you want to call it anything um and and you're tapping into this whole subreddit idea and how people have 
been basically creating a cult dedicated to this hat man by intentionally communing with him through the gateway of delirium caused by this drug and it's just it's just fantastic so well done to you you know and uh thank you for putting together such a succinct video just laying it all out you know and i think uh, it might be good for us to just let's get into it you know so uh I have the um, the video on my screen right now, and like I said earlier, you've you've mapped out basically every single subheading to this subject that you've uh, broken down, and you've done the whole that the ben, the Benadryl iceberg you've called it, which I think is a uh, which is cool. So I'll let you if you want. Let's just go through the tiers, the the most basic ones, and let's get darker and deeper as this conversation goes on. And I I just want the guys to uh, obviously they can watch your video after this, but let's let's just redo your video now. But let's go deeper. I'm all for it, you know. Um, so it starts with the internet's dark subculture, you know, tier one, Benadryl for allergies. Um, can you elaborate on this? And let's just start from the beginning. Yeah, so Benadryl for allergies, that's kind of what the world knows. Um, yeah. That's what, the, yeah, that's what we all know. Uh, and pretty much, you know, the, the dangerous thing about these kind of things is that because you can get it at, a gas station you know gas stations here they have that um and and it's just, you can get it anywhere almost anywhere that's what why people kind of uh think these are kitty kitty drugs and kitty uh, you know they don't take these stuff these things seriously and that's really the danger so that is the top not even it's not even touching the iceberg that is just like what people know so that's kind of where, where it starts off mm -hmm. yeah yeah well you're right you know i, I, I can go to any supermarket anywhere and just buy these off the shelf as many as I want. There's not even a limit on uh, hay fever tablets. You know, I used to work in, in a supermarket and they're quite strict here in the UK. You can only buy, um, when it comes to something like paracetamol or ibuprofen, um, you can only buy one packet of each max or two packets of the same kind. You can't get any more than that um, in one shopping visit. You're just not allowed. But when it comes to hay fever yeah. tablets, there was no limit. And I never thought anything of that. You know, I thought that's fine, oh, whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, that's fine. But now after watching this video, I realize I may have so sold people extremely hard psychedelic drugs without realizing it, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's... You know, it's crazy. It's, it's really, it really is up there with Detura. People don't believe that. They really don't believe that. But it's the same class of hallucinogen and it's hardcore at, at, at levels. And just to think, whenever I walk by the, the store and I see that, I'm like, well, there's a whole world right there on that shelf, you know? Yeah. So is this tier two? Is this the uh, diphenhydramine then? Is this the chemical? Yep. Diphenhydramine, that's the active ingredient. Um, and it's, like I mentioned, it's a subclass of hallucinogen called a delirium. So there's only a couple of delirium, um, um, you know, or they're very rare. Mm -hmm. um, Detura being one of them. So they're pre it's pretty... Uh, and so what the thing with delirium is that once you, you know, they, they induce delirium, which when you reach delirium, you can't tell the difference between hallucination and, and reality. Like it, it's, it's not like, um, LSD or shrooms where you might be hallucinating and you can tell the difference like, oh yeah, that's, that's just the shrooms doing that. You know, with this, you can't tell it's it, to you. It's real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is delirium by, if you could define delirium for me and for others out there who might not know what that means, um, my understanding is it is basically this, this blending of reality and non-reality and your own perception kind of becomes one and you can, you can no longer distinguish the difference. It's kind of like when you're in a dream and the dream seems perfectly normal, even though it's absolutely insane to your perception. Is it kind of the same thing in waking life? Is that delirium? What would you define it as? Absolutely. That was actually like really good. Yeah, that that's that's what it is. Um, you know, with delirium and, and when you're in that in that stage, it's it you really can talk to full um have full conversations with your mom, with your dad, with your friend. And for I, I've read up to a couple of hours people have these conversations and it to to you it's real and you know, two hours later they just disappear and it's never happened and, and you 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 were none the wiser, you know. So it's Mm -hmm. It pretty much is like a dream that you can't tell you're dreaming. Wow. That's terrifying that this is just on the shelves. And, and what, what's the age limit to buy these things? It's not. It's quite young, actually, isn't it? Now I think about it. Is it 16? I, don't, I think so. I, I really feel like, it, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think you can get it at 16. Uh, but it's it's pretty crazy. Like I said, people don't take this stuff seriously because they, they think, oh, well, I take two for allergies and it does nothing. You know, mm -hmm. But it's... It's not two that's going to get you there, you know? 
That's true. That's true. You know, it's funny. I have these distinct... I don't know why I have these stupid memories in my mind, but I remember there's an episode of Friends, I think, where Chandler takes some some Benadryl um, because he was was nervous about a photo shoot with Monica, his wife. I watched this episode recently, so he just came to my mind. And uh, and I was thinking, like, I remember this distinct... he He was acting incredibly drugged you know what i mean in that scene and mm-hmm. and i never i never made the link and um that there was there was such an impact from from hay fever tablets you know because i've taken i've taken one or two in my time for the for the for the distinct purpose of my eyes are itchy and my sinuses are a bit stuffy you know and then right, right, right. i never really considered the the impact of i should probably shouldn't be driving while on these things you know what i mean and i don't think people do do they i don't think that ever crosses your mind but uh yeah, I don't. I don't know why that came to my mind. I just remember this distinct. This in in the media, Benadryl has been hinted at plenty of times. That yeah, it's a it's a powerful drug that messes you up, and you shouldn't be doing stuff. Don't don't operate heavy machinery type of stuff. You know. But, yeah, that, that's hilarious that you even mentioned that. I gotta I gotta go look that up. But um, <laughs> no, you know, there there even right now there's even studies that I mentioned further down where they mention that even regular use, like even using Benadryl, you know, like for just regularly is can uh really increase your risk of dementia by like 50 percent in like the course of three years mm. it's it's pretty crazy there there's definitely some kind of uh not good for your brain type stuff with that so oh, wow. you know wow. i think one day it'll be it'll be sort of a restricted thing but you know we'll see mm. so is this kind of like the classic you know people thought smoking was good for them in the 50s type of thing and then they discovered it was killing them all along. Is this what Ben? Is this Benadryl going to have the exact same story in the future? Are we going to look back in the future and go, "What were we thinking?" <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't. Like you know, what, the more I look into it, it, it really, it's becomes even scarier to think that it's just out there and we just it's so normalized. We don't. We have no. Uh, no deeper knowledge of of but you know most people aren't abusing it so i get it you know yeah it reminds me of a uh, salvia divinorum which was like a uh, an extremely potent psychedelic probably on par with the dmt and you could just buy it you could just buy it in head shops legally in england just buy the bag and you know and it was considered just on on par with like hooker pipes and stuff like that like nothing at all you know just a bit of fun. and um now it's now it's now it's considered obviously an illegal substance. I think they've clocked on to what it actually was, but uh, to, to think that this incredibly psychedelic, powerful drug, probably the most powerful in the world, was just being sold to anybody and anybody over the counter was just. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think I'm getting the same vibes from Benadryl, but but this is a bit more sinister because, like I said, it, this is marketed, you know, and this is uh, you have to wonder: do the people who create these things know what they're actually doing here? You know, especially if it helps people commune with let's just call them demonic entities i know there's probably many variations of what people would want to interpret them as but uh, i've got what i've got something here on your list it says um taking it to fall asleep and the benadryl challenge can you explain those two for me yeah so taking it to fall asleep it really does make you sleepy and there is uh, people take what's called a, a therapeutic dose mm-hmm. um, and that's a pretty low dose i mean it's it's just it's just above like what you would normally take um and it just helps you fall asleep it really does make you super t- tired as cough and cold medicines do mm-hmm. some people actually you know habitually use it to fall asleep and 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 that's kind of how it how some people begin to kind of normalize it in their life as as just like oh i just take it to fall asleep you know it's not a big deal and and but the thing is that you kind of build up a tolerance sort of like melatonin you know yeah. and then eventually you need you need a uh, four to fall asleep or you need five mm-hmm. and you know, I, I get a bunch of comments like that, too. I, I, you know, there's so many things that I kind of want to clarify, too. I get a lot of comments that people are like, oh, I take four to five sli- uh, to go to bed, and I don't see that, man. I'm just like, you know, like, you have a tolerance, you know? Mm-hmm. If you're taking four to five every every day, chances are you're not – it's going to take a lot more for you to actually feel some type of delirium effects. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, people take it to fall asleep. It's just sort of a, a thing people do, and uh, it's included on there um tiktok benadryl challenge so this is kind of where um this is the tip of the iceberg because this is kind of like the news headlines this is what how people became in tune with this sort of world and you know it really just began with memes of the hat man see the hat man take benadryl to see the hat man you know and Mm -hmm. so it would encourage encourage these kids to like take uh you know 
15 Benadryl or whatever it is um, in order to hallucinate and see the hat man and that was it started off as memes like funny little yeah, like oh come and you know come and do this how serious could it be you know so it's kind of how it started mm -hmm. some kids have died even as recent as like a couple like two three months ago a kid died 13 year old kid mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know like i said it's just a stigma of like it's available everywhere it's not dangerous but it, it really is mm, so this the benadryl challenge it was a meme. So it's just like uh, there's been plenty of things like this over the years, hasn't there? Um, the chat, these challenges that end up with children de dead. <laughs> it seems to be an extremely common theme over the past decade and a half, and um, they seem to get more and more sinister. But there was a blue whale challenge, if I remember correctly, wasn't there? If um, that's another one from a while ago, and I think people would be yeah. would be getting um, messages of to do more and more hardcore things as each step went by. And the final step is to kill yourself, I think it was. And there were actually, wow. people, actually people doing that. It's like an online subculture of people getting involved yeah. in this thing called the Blue Whale. And um, yeah, that's yeah. The, this Benadryl one just seems even more sinister because I think it's more like a, a, a faster route to that same end goal, you know? And it makes you wonder who's who's creating these challenges, you know? who? What's the source behind all of this? Do you have any theories or ideas of where these things come from? Do you think it's just kids playing about initially? Or do you think there's maybe something sinister behind the creation of these odd challenges like the Benadryl challenge? I think it starts off as like kids that might see something on Reddit. And, you know, there's a lot of memes. It's not just one meme that I feel circulated. It's a lot of memes. And, and you know, there's a lot of subcultures on Reddit, discords and stuff like that, which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. and, they're all about memes and these memes are very dark I, I, I some are, are are really funny and that's the kind of like thing about this this internet culture yeah is they're, they're dark and it's you know almost mortifying but it, it's it's like it's on purpose like this they like it this is how they get down you know mm -hmm. and uh, um so it, it's plenty i think it just started by people seeing these memes on reddit and then thinking like, oh, let, let's do that. You want to see the hat man, right? And it just kind of began like that. Kind of the same way that people would like, you know, hear rumors of like Pink, you play, you know, Pink Floyd backwards and you'll hear messages or something. Like it just kind of began in that kind of word of mouth type of way. And mm -hmm. eventually it's like, oh, let's take the Benadryl challenge and, you know, yeah. something like that, I think so. So it's kind of like an old school version of uh, kids playing with the Ouija boards. It's more of a new age version of that, isn't it? In a way, let's let's uh, you know, or let's uh, say Candyman in the mirror three times. It's that kind of thing, isn't it? Let's just let's just see. Let's just do it to see what happens for a laugh, you know. And then then it ends up going spiraling down to a serious addiction from the sounds of it. Uh, right. So I guess that that's tier one then, isn't it? That's just the start. That's the tip of the iceberg. Let's. Uh... Before we dive further, I do yeah. want to say that you nope. know. A lot of these kids that have died they've died with like 13 15 pills um there's i get a lot of comments as well that are like, they're like how are they dying at 13 and 15 pills i've taken 13 and 15 but you got to remember these are kids you know like these are not adults that weigh 200 pounds or whatever you know these are kids mm -hmm. so um so yeah i just wanted to point that out that i get that all the time where people are like i did this and i never died. it's okay you know it's, these are kids yeah <laughs> be different yeah, so the, the, what lightweights? How dare you know? God, man up. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, 13 pills, that's nothing. That's breakfast, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's people out there like that. I get that all the time. I get that all the time. They think I'm lying because, you know, I, I'm like, it's in the news. They should really mm. die with 13 pills. What do you want me to say? Yeah. Well, let's talk about the adults then who get involved with this. I guess this is the next tier, isn't it? And it's starting with something a bit a bit out there. Let's, let's talk about the fap dose. Do you want to, do you want to elaborate on that one? Yeah, so fap dose is people use it all the time for sexual reasons, and it it's supposed to enhance the sexual feelings because of the vascular vasoconstrictive properties. There we go. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, and the problem with this is that it can really damage your junk if you're a guy. It really can damage it, and there's a lot of reports on this all over the internet that are terrible. So definitely. You know, this is one that like you should never do anything sexual on it because it can lead to permanent dysfunctions. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that, well, well, we'll move on from that one. Let's let's talk about calling it DPH. Can you elaborate on this as well? 
Yeah, DPH acronym for uh, diphenhydramine. Um, this is just what you'll hear. This is how you'll hear. This is how I mention it a lot in the video. I'm just DPH, and um, it's just an easier way to say it. But it also normalizes it and makes it this little like cool. You know, it's like calling it robo tripping skittles and vexing. It's because. Um, as you'll find out, for some reason, I, I understand it. I understand where it's coming from, but they get addicted to the darkness. It, it's like there's there's a this is a very dark. Um, I kind of put it in the in, in the video like that. It's the horror version of drugs. It's it's you know there's genres there's there's metal there's you know rap and stuff. This would be like the metal horror Michael Myers version of drugs, and and, and people like that. Though. Yeah, that's what people seek, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the visuals on this, when it does start getting into the psychedelic realm, is twisted and dark and, and edges more towards a nightmarish trip than, let's say, the colourful things on acid or mushrooms you would normally experience or the, the colourful uh, psychedelic image of, um, let's say, dimethyltryptamine. This is far more darker, grittier, more Silent Hill type universe. Is that what we're talking about here? Exactly. It it really is a hard in drug. Like it, it's not. Um, uh, can you have a good trip on it? Well, people enjoy the scary aspect of it. Um, there's a, a YouTuber called uh, his name is uh, Paul the Alien. He just died. So rest in peace, Paul the Alien. Mm. Um, he just died, and you know if I, I watched a lot of his videos in preparation for this, and you know he would take it and report his trips and he mentioned how he took this drug on halloween because he wanted to have a proper halloween experience you know he wanted the shadows he wanted to feel that, that nightmarish world mm -hmm. that's the allure of it yeah yeah sounds terrifying i mean I'm, I'm no stranger to psychedelic drugs you know I, I come from that world i've done i've done quite a few in my time but this doesn't to me sound like something i personally would want to to delve into but like you said i guess it's just this kind of this culture for it isn't there this this desire to see the darkest things and you know stare into the abyss as far as you possibly can it's just it's alien to me personally but it's fascinating to hear about absolutely so um the next one the next one here is mixing dhp with dxm do you want to explain what that is yeah so dxm dextromethorphan i'm actually um, um you know i'm actually like getting a little bit more familiar with that um but dph and dxm they, a lot of people use it to counteract each other's um, good and bad side effects. So with DXM, people report robo itch. It's it's you know they get really itchy when they're tripping on DXM. Mm -hmm. What they do is they'll take a little bit of DPH in order to not feel that itchiness. Same thing with DPH. Uh, you know, uh, same thing. You know, uh, vice versa. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not recommended because if you so something like dextromethorphan, the pharmacology of that is extremely complex. It, it's like you almost can't mix it with anything without a negative side effect. Mm. So to play with the fact that you're mixing it with DPH is very, very like not recommended. You can easily overdose. It can easily become a very like um, even at low doses, you can overdose doing this. So don't recommend, even though there are people who do this, um, like I said, to counteract negative effects such as nausea and itching and stuff like that right interesting right yeah i mean again i'm getting memories go ahead oh no sorry sorry i, I was just gonna say and it's supposed to perpetuate the, the effects of one so if you take a small amount of dph and a large amount of dxm it can increase the visuals or the sensations of dxm so vice versa yeah this reminds uh, this is a a common thing done in in all drug culture from what i remember i mean i remember people candy flipping that was a very popular one in my in my circles where people would take lsd mm -hmm. then they would also take a quick dab of mdma to heighten the entire trip and make it last longer um, and uh, I, I can understand this is just another example of that that idea isn't it that and obviously you would you would pay for it the next morning don't get me wrong but it's kind of i don't think it, i don't think in the more in the moment people care about that kind of thing do they um but yeah obviously not promoting this in any way shape or form it's it's a terrible idea from start to finish um, i mean it says here this might be this might be leaning on to it but um you say here no this this drug sucks is another one do you want to elaborate with that that phrase comes from 
Yeah, so any of this drug sucks. Um, there is that's the, really the paradox of this community. And if you go on the online forums, and, you know, discords, and, and I have a lot of people that reach out to me, they hate this drug. They hate it. It's crazy how much they hate it. They also can't stop. And that's really what it, you know, it's not like um, when people are addicted to other drugs that are like, oh, I can't, you know, it just makes me feel better. No, like they all hate this drug, but they just can't stop. And they, and they crave it in a weird way, but they hate the way it makes them feel. It's, it's, a, it's a very like common phenomenon in the, in, in the culture. It's just, they hate it and they kind of joke about it, you know, like, like it sucks, but you know, they're, they're, they keep going. So it's the paradox. It's kind of like they're stuck in a, in a in a narcissistic relationship with this drug, <laughs> and uh, no matter how much they try to leave and how much they know it, and they know it's bad for them, they just keep going back for more abuse. Basically, <laughs> interesting. You're not, you're on the you're on the nose with these uh these analogies. <laughs> well, no, this this is all new to me. You know, I'm I'm just I'm, I'm brainstorming as you as you're telling me these things. You know, I watched the video, so. I've got a bit of a, a gist about what's going on, but I feel like there's there's so much more to discuss here, and so so many tangents you could go off. I'm I'm yes. I'm holding back and going down too many because we only have so much time. But uh, let's go on to the next one. Let's go into r r slash dph. Do you want to explain what this is? Yeah, so that's the most popular Benadryl uh, forum that you can find on Reddit, and that's where you'll find trip reports. You'll find people giving advice some people are trying to stop others and you'll see a lot of memes there you'll see um stories you'll see uh people documenting their their final moments on that you know it's 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 a bit of a ritual in that community to um take a picture of the dose you're going to take post it on there and then report back to them what you're feeling so it's just mm. it's, it's real fun on this right so this goes on to tier four then i guess which is you know uh, reddit um dph anonymous do you want to go on to, I guess it gets a bit deeper, doesn't it, if you want to explain that one? Right, right. So, and I'll try to go a little faster. I know I've been kind of ranting, but... Okay. No, 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 no. Slash DPH Anonymous. Go ahead. Um, so, so that is basically, that's a resource group. Uh, you know, they, they want to, it's for harm reduction and for overcoming addiction. Um, I do link it on my video if you want to go see that, if, if anyone happens to have any issues i doubt somebody's gonna have an issue here but you know it, it's a good source it's people that have been there done that and they're helping others get out of that kind of uh, addiction that's wonderful it's good that there's a community out there to do that i'm i'm happy to hear that because it all sounds like a lot of doom and gloom when watching your video until you realize there are at least, at least some people are trying to stop to stop you know <laughs> um because this is the problem with like yeah, no, exactly. yeah the problem with like meme culture addicts is like you said that there is this whole in-group stuff going on where you they want to be a part of something therefore that they'll they'll basically take drugs to the death rather than leave their group or their people um which is a major problem with most forms of addiction i think a lot of people do end up identifying with their addiction and identifying with the people around them who kind of encourage them to continue and to to say well i'm not going to do it anymore um is basically to cast aspersions on those who choose not to stop you know it's kind of like well you think you're better than me type of thing you know <laughs> so a lot of people end up spiraling and, and staying within the addictions but from what you explained to me people joke about trying to quit <laughs> because they know it's it's next to impossible you know and uh, i hate this drug i want to quit but look how many pills i'm about to take you know <laughs> it's that kind of thing so it's a, this is a weird one this is a really weird one Maybe it, has yeah. maybe it has something to do with the brain damage it causes. I'm wondering. Yeah, so the next one we have is psychosis. Um, mm -hmm. Psychosis is kind of like uh, uh, a complete disconnection from reality, pretty much. Uh, you can't interpret reality normally. Um, you know, you're constantly living in delusion. Um, it, 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 psychosis can kind of be comprehensive it's not one symptom or anything mm -hmm. but generally it's just a disconnect from reality and, and you're unable to interpret reality normally mm -hmm. so is that the basic first level of tripping that this causes is this what the lowest dose is i say lowest doses but i mean those who are trying to see something this is the first level psychosis mm -hmm. is that what they're going for well psychosis is um Probably the most prevalent thing you'll 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 see people have as aftermath 
of doing any of this. Right. So this is just, uh, you know, for even as an average recreational user, you'll 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 experience some psychosis. Um, very rare that you don't, and so that's why it's there. Just mm -hmm. because it's so at this point, you're probably experiencing that in your daily life. Right. So the consequences of doing this is psychosis, whether you like it or not. No matter how much you know, you, you you're gonna suffer by doing this. Basically, is what you're trying to say there. Right. Well, that's that's terrifying in its own right. Um, yeah. So let's go on to the next one then. Let's talk about shadow people. How is the, how are shadow people linked to this drug? Let's go. This is where it gets really trippy. Let's go. Okay. So shadow people. This is something that you'll like absolutely see. This is something that even at low doses, you know, such as like a um, little higher than therapeutic dose or fab dose, and uh, you know, a um, couple of pills, you can begin to see this. Um, shadow people mostly come in three types there's hooded shadow people there's silhouette shadow people and then there's of course the hat man which we'll talk about later but um, people report shadow people walking in and out of walls you know coming from the floors some people report shadow people just standing you know at a corner of the room or just standing in the room um, some people feel and this is something i didn't really go into in the video so here's a little something more yeah um, a lot of people report speak speaking to voices speaking to voices and it almost feel like like these these shadow people can can are having conversations with each other and they're not included they're just overhearing this this these shadow people speak mm. what's interesting about this is that when not only do they hear shadow people speak when they hear them speak they almost always shadow people are talking about them like negatively they're talking like, you know, they'll be talking crap about your room or they'll be saying this, you know, it's always about you. Always speaking negatively about you. It's very, very weird. Mm. It's interesting you should say this. So people hear, start to hear voices and conversations, but then also have these visuals of no entities in the same room as them. Having See, this all reminds me of the work of somebody called Jerry Marzinski. Have you heard of this person before? No. no. Okay. So, so uh, just a bit of context. Jerry Marzinski is a, a psychotherapist. Um, he worked in the prison systems with schizophrenics. Um, so he's a doctor, you know, he's actually, he's a trained physician in this respect. You know, he can, and he basically works with schizophrenics in prison, within the prison system. You know, he works with the, the, the craziest of people basically who were diagnosed with schizophrenia and that his job was to be a therapist for them in house, you know, and he basically through years of his research, he came to the conclusion that, um, no one actually knows what schizophrenia really is. Um, the the pharmaceutical industry basically just gives people drugs to suppress the the voices people hear. Um, he has himself come to the conclusion through this is through years of experience with people with schizophrenia that these people are not making this up in their own head. It 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 distinctly appears that they these things talking all have the same agenda, communicate with each other and also have personalities that are very different from the individual who's created them type of thing and they so but they all seem to have a common agenda so he's concluded that these are real entities that these people are hearing speak and you're saying people who take high doses of benadryl start to hear voices come through and it's as though they are talking and working together with the same agenda about the individual that they're kind of oppressing in a sense. So he's not a religious pa a person, you know, uh, uh, Christians uh, like myself would define this as uh, demons, you know, spiritual entities in of a negative malevolent force, you know, and um, people with schizophrenics are basically just, they get to hear their demons that are attached to them. You know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of their curse. And I would, I would interpret Benadryl as perhaps opening up the same portal as schizophrenics have to deal with in a sense maybe it ha maybe it has something to do with brain damage which kind of makes this this happen um but it's interesting yeah. if you haven't heard of jerry marzinski i'd recommend you check out he, yeah, he's yeah. everywhere you know he's he's yeah he goes into it hard and he's had some weird experiences you know that yeah but this, this links definitely links definitely Sorry, I'll let you go. I, I ranted them. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty creepy. Yeah, no, it is. It, uh, no, no, of course. That's pretty creepy. That. <laughs> yeah. So he, he, he's adamant, you know, at the, uh, the pharma... Oh, that's, that's, that's terrible. Yeah, he's adamant the pharmaceutical industry is is basically playing people just to get sell more drugs. 
Like they actually, they actually haven't got a clue what's going on. Like they they just they don't know what schizophrenia is. They they're not curing anything, you know, and they're not interested in curing people. They're they're, more, they're happy just to give people drugs that suppress uh, the voices as much as they can, you know. But it's it's like the things these voices tell people to do. It's like they feed off the energy of the person they're kind of oppressing. They they tell them to kill themselves, or you know, they tell them to that they're worthless, they're useless, they're pathetic. You know, they're they they don't deserve to be alive. They're a drain on everybody around them, and then they intentionally build up fear in the person they're oppressing. They they bring them to a point of absolute panic and hysteria, and then suddenly all their energy gets drained from them, and they just collapse, and they just want to sleep, and they're like out for a day or two. And it's kind of like these the energetic vampires, as he describes them. You know, it's like they're intentionally doing this to feed off the negative energy of their victims, in a sense. So, if people who take this this Benadryl are basically getting in touch with the same being schizophrenics, unfortunately, without any choice, have to deal with. It, you know, it, it, there's, there's something weird about all of this. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, that people would choose to become schizophrenic. Basically, is what's happening there. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, let's move yeah, on. Let's they, move call on. It, they call it schizophrenia in a bottle. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Well, there you go. There you go. What do you know? <laughs> anyway, I've ranted on long enough. Let, let's keep going. So we have shadow people covered. Um, let's go on to uh, erectile dysfunction. <laughs> I suppose this is from the last one, isn't it? Uh, we've kind of talked about this one. Yeah. So um, if you're using it regularly for that, um, it's it's pretty likely that you can develop a permanent version of erectile dysfunction, which obviously would suck. So. Yeah, so there, there you go. One one very good reason not to do it at all anyway, straight off the bat there. Uh, so trip reports. Let's go on. Let's talk about these. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, what have you found? I just want to mention that... The, the, I just want to mention that the erectile dysfunction is probably the main reason, the, the main comment. I see people say they'll never try it, so that's good. <laughs> well, there you um, go. Yeah. So trip reports. Yeah, trip reports, I mean, that's like an integral of the community the dph online community you know they they take a picture of their dose and they report what they feel and they report what they saw and um, people try to one up each other you know they'll try to be crazier than the next they'll try to reach realms you know the thing about trip reports is that it's really the documentation of what they perceive to be a realm you know they really think that um they're, and there's sort of that argument of does Benadryl make you hallucinate or does it, or does it somehow let you peer into a world? Mm -hmm. and that's sort of, the, you know, the, because the trip reports are eerily similar. You know, they all see shadow people. They all see certain things, which we'll talk about. And um, it really is the documentation, not only of their hallucinations, but what they feel is an actual world that they're, you know, peering into. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. And, and uh, these can get crazy. And obviously, they, they go every which direction. But uh, we'll move on because it, this could be long. <laughs> All right. Well, just a brief um, concept on that. I mean, any psychedelic subreddit community that I've gone into and in looking at trip reports, um, it's, it is a common thread that certain drugs take people to the exact same places. And it does seem like each drug is a portal to a different realm. That is one thing, uh, just quickly summarizing there. I too have noticed from my own experience with trip reports when I used to be in the psychedelic realm. Um, like it's like the common theme of people seeing jesters when they take DMT, for example. Um, it's it's a common thread, and it, it implies it's the same place these people are going to. It's a real tangible dimension, shall we call it, for for lack of a better term. Um, let's, let's call it a pocket dimension, <laughs> some or something like that. Um, but yeah, let, let's move on. Let's go into tier five. This is where it's getting, we're getting deeper now. We're getting really, really down under the depths here, aren't we? So let's talk about the spiders. The spider. So this is another thing, just like shadow people, you almost guarantee will see shadow people. I mean, that's shadow people, spiders. Mm -hmm. um, you will see spiders. And then this is, this can be in all shapes and forms. Like they can be small, they can be huge. Um, they're usually black or translucent. And alongside spiders, it really is just other insects, such as flies, moths, gnats, all these kind of things. So, mm -hmm. um, but the spiders are like, you'll almost guaranteed to see this, I would say. Like, very, I, have, I don't think I've ever seen a report where somebody has taken a certain amount or even spoke to anyone that hasn't seen this. So, this is like very interesting to me because, um, 
you know, the astral plane, like people who astral project, they also report seeing these spiders that are black and translucent the same way that people reported it on Benadryl. That's pretty weird to me. You know, that's pretty interesting. So mm. there seems to be a theme with spiders. Interesting. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't know where to go with that idea in terms of a, a creature in another realm that has the form of a spider. If you want to consider, let's say, Stephen King's It, Pennywise's true form was a giant spider, um, which I think is interesting. And with my own research, with my own research and work, um, Pennywise, the clown, a clown is a representation of demonic spirits. It's a caricatured version created by secret societies in the West. Um, so the clown does represent, symbolically speaking, a literal demon. And for it to have this other form of a spider in the uh, in the unseen realms where it, where it resides, you know, the, where the dead lights are, as it said in Stephen King's fictional universe. I think that's a fascinating connection there already that maybe other people are, are aware of this connection between spiders. But I also had, I remember I had a distinctly personal experience um, when I was 17 um, where I was, um, I was in bed with my girlfriend at the time um, asleep and I dreamt I was paralyzed in the bed with a mass of giant spiders legs, a big ball of them coming down towards my stomach. And I remember wrenching myself awake, screaming as it kind of got closer and closer to clawing its way at my stomach. You know what I mean? As it came down from the ceiling. So maybe there is, there must be something to do with spiders in some kind of spirit capacity. But um, I, I wouldn't know how to pin them down, you know, and what they are exactly. But interesting that people in Benadryl see them all the time. Definitely. Um, what do you think? What do you, what do you think? That's yeah, this one's weird because what, what, is kind of like a strange is that they report the translucent spiders they're sort of like see-through spiders mm -hmm. um, and that's the common thing when uh reported with people who astral project and so people who are astral projecting and take benadryl don't see translucent spiders that's so weirdly specific you know it is mm -hmm. it is it's very specific it, you know yeah, it's very specific. And, you know, sleep paralysis, I don't know if you know, I'm sure you know, but sleep paralysis is the first step to astral project. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. And so people see the hat man and shadow people and stuff like that uh, during sleep paralysis. But it kind of seems to be connected. Benadryl sleep paralysis and astral plane or astral realm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's possible the, uh, I mean, personally, yeah. I, I believe the astral realm, this is my, you don't have to, believe me on this but if, if you haven't heard this interpretation before um i consider the astral realm basically it's still the earth it's like the pipe work or the encoding of the earth it's like the behind the scenes stuff we don't need to see that projects the thing we physically live within that's kind of what the astral realm is um it's like the, the matrix green coding you know from the film in the background type of thing but what we physically see is is a physical realm um and there is a, a theory residing that basically the disembodied spirits of once um giants that once were on the earth they once they died the spirits became wandering spirits which were stuck on earth without a body so they would be in what we call the astral realm which may be an explanation for the the jesters the shadow people and even these strange insectoid hybrid creatures um because it was described in the book of enoch that and even other extra biblical texts that human beings started mixing kinds together and became human animal hybrids or um, crazy monsters mixed together with different features from different animals. So I do wonder if, you know, this, this astral realm has its own ecosystem of bizarre creatures and insects that were kind of left over from this, this ancient culling of the past, you know, <laughs> and they might just have their own insects just wandering around that look insane. You know, maybe, I don't know, I'm spitballing here um just just throwing some ideas out but uh it seems like benadryl is an extremely powerful it's so like it seems like, yeah it seems like benadryl is an extremely powerful um gateway to get there quickly um so we need to i think people need to be hyper aware of this yeah yeah anyway let's let's keep going then so there's the spiders yeah. let's talk about uh, replications i'm not i can't remember this one what's this one about replications so there's a there's just a bunch of videos online that replicate the visuals of yeah. TPH trips, and it, it's it's sort of like a, its own 
artistic, you know, genre in, in a sense. Um, people, um, there's some really good ones. And there's a lot of verified users who claim that these replications really do look exactly like what a Benito trip looks like, um, which if you go look some up, they're very kind of always dark, obviously shadow people and stuff like that, but apparently they're very accurate and they, they're they pretty crazy. So um, if you just search up like DPH replications on YouTube, you'll find a lot. Hmm. Were, those, were those the ones you were playing in the background of your video? No, I didn't. I, I only, well, I played like one replication, I think, during this, but the whole video, um, I just cut up a bunch of different um, analog horror stuff. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, so, but it wasn't the replications. I, I, I think I played a piece. If, if you want to see a lot of replications on my video entering the Shadow Realm, I, I use almost the entire video as a replication. Right, I will look into that just to see what's going on there. I'm always interested to see what the people are seeing in these places. Um, right, so uh, let's go into heavy recreational use. How does this differ from the other levels? What are, what are people doing here? These are people that are probably going to delirium every day. Like they're, they're probably, or, or every other day, um, or just, you know, very repeatedly. And um, so this isn't for the person that's taking it to fall asleep every day. That, that wouldn't be a heavy user. A heavy user would be somebody who is genuinely taking it, seek, seeking delirium every day. Um, so that means they're taking 500 to 700 milligrams of, of DPH to get there. Um, that how, is quite a bit. How many pills is that? In pills, I remember... One second. In pills, that would be that would be about twenty to twenty eight pills. What? How do people even do that? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I had to. I had to take a moment to. to um, yeah, I'm running off of very little sleep, so I'm just like, uh. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. That's fine. I'm glad you did it. Yeah, I'm glad you did that because I I can't even imagine taking that many pills and it, it sounds exhausting. Why bother? <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. And I know that doesn't. I, I, watching your video, it doesn't just end there. Um, let's let's just keep let's just keep going. Um, right. So uh, what's HPPD? What's this? Hallucinogen persistent perception disorder. So that yeah. is. Uh, uh, there's two kinds of this. It's basically when you, it's kind of like the LSD flashbacks where you have a flashback of a trip. Mm -hmm. um, um, so there's two ways that this can happen. You either get it kind of abruptly, sort of like like a flashback, like where you'll sort of just randomly hallucinate or you'll experience the sensations and, and it's brief, or you have uh, it in a more severe form, which means that you're cons every day, constantly, you feel like you're slightly hallucinating or slightly tripping or slightly feeling some kind of sensation as if you've taken DPH. Mm -hmm. um, that would actually be the worst kind to have. Um, and usually that's, that's, it's very common. This is like extremely common to have this after, after using this, even like once you can, you can get this disorder, which can be lifelong. So it's, it's pretty severe. Yes, it sounds like maybe a form of lasting brain damage of some kind. Um, it reminds me, I mean, I remember during my psychedelic tripping days, we're talking, well, we're talking a long time ago here now, over a decade ago, but I do remember things like flashbacks. And I do remember going through full days, think, feeling like I was in that psychedelic realm slightly, um, like I'd been microdosing LSD for the day or something like that. Um, so I can, I can relate to that. Luckily that, that stopped for me now. Um, and I don't get flashbacks anymore, but at the time it does feel like it's going to go on forever and that can be a scary feeling. So it's, from what, you, from what you've just described, if you do hardcore go on this Benadryl, then you may actually permanently be stuck in that situation, which is, sounds like a nightmare. That sounds like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, no, it really, it really gets common. It's very common. So that's, mm. it's not good. Not good at all. No, God, it just gets worse. And this is like, let's remember, guys, let's just stop and pause for a second. This is over the counter in every supermarket and kids can buy it. OK, <laughs> let's just stop and think about that for a second. Like, and let's just let's, let's just keep going. Um, 
So uh, what's this? U slash tired of people faking. Two. Oh, so you slash tired of people faking two. He was a redditor who was sort of uh, notorious because he kind of documented his entire DPH destruction. Like he, uh, from from the start all the way to end. Uh, by the time he posted his first his first post on there, I think. Actually, he was already like a year into it, I think. And but it was getting bad. You know, every every trip he would try to one up himself and one up himself and and um oh geez, I forget how many he took uh when he when he died, but it was upwards of like two hundred and like seventy something pills that he took. And and he took a picture of his the reason he's so famous is because he took a picture of his last uh, Benadryl dose in the shape of a he kind of shaped it as like an angel. He took that. That would be his last dose ever, and he would he would die after that. And uh, he died of uh, two hundred and seventy six Benadryl pills. That would be six point nine grams. That is ridiculous. That is. And what what's this obsession with documenting it for us to see? What what is what is this? This is just part of the subculture, just to to show the people what you're about to do, even though you know. I mean, do the people do the people in these groups who see these things try to do anything to stop them, or is it more of a yeah, you go for it, go for that final trip, I'll see you on the other side type of thing? What what? How do people in the culture react to this type of type of thing? You know, I think that a lot of people are actually kind of like stop. A lot of people, what you know, when it, it depends on what dose you're taking if they're taking if they're seeing people that post things like this a lot of the people will step in and kind of like say like dude that's insane like what are you doing yeah. um but obviously there's nothing we can really do on reddit it's not like you know where that person lives or where to send an ambulance you know um so well you know um, yeah people generally yeah if you're taking that much people generally do step in and say like that's ridiculous. Like, don't do this. This is insane, you know. But um, just the fact that it was in the shape of an angel and just it, it's pretty eerie. That that yeah, that sounds creepy and terrifying. I mean, just to know that you were watching that live, for example, and you saw the post, and you just know that person's just died. <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's it's yeah, it's disturbing. So let's go on to this whole four thousand milligram trip thing that is seems to be an obsession among some of the the hardcore people within. What's this about? So well, that's kind of just, it's a meme. So they're kind of making it a joke. Right. Um, it's its a meme that, uh, that compares like a hardcore user and a, and a therapeutic virgin, as they call it. And, you know, they'll make jokes about how a, therape- a therapeutic virgin has allergies and, you know, uh, itchy eyes and stuff. And then the 4,000 milligram Chad you know, he's, he's curing allergies because he just takes so much Benadryl, you know, and, and, and it's just a whole comparison of, of this and that. And, um, you know, obviously it's hyperbole the whole time and it's funny, yeah. but, um, yeah, they, they really, uh, kind of make light of, of, uh, vertical users and almost the, the sense of, I want to say arrogance, but, you know, there's definitely this different air to them, and this is just making light of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine the memes now already, and this is the problem. Then, when you when you're in a culture like that, those type of memes are funny, and they can, like I said, reinforce and perpetuate the the mentality that yeah, this is this is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing here. Let's just keep going with it. You know? <laughs> and I guess it's funny that humor is yeah, the, yeah. yeah humor is this tool, isn't it? That does keep people doing things that are otherwise killing them it just seems to be a really common thing it's kind of like um an apathy in a sense or um a mockery of existence in a sense and yeah i think we should be sure we always be weary of of humor when it comes to things that could easily kill you but uh i'm not surprised by that one at all no so what's this i i love dph then this r slash i love dph is this more of the same um Okay, so, no, so this one, I'm kind of, we're getting into the kind of more interesting things, I, I would say. Okay. So, r slash I love DPH is is made by this guy named Epic Estella, who's on, who's right, coming up next. Okay. And um, um, this subreddit, you can't talk anything, ne- you can't say anything negatively about 
DPH. It's all, I love DPH stuff. But the reason, so the creator who, who made this, this uh, subreddit, he made it strictly you know, as a way to worship the hat man. Right. So this, this entire subreddit was created with the intention of appeasing, pleasing and appeasing the hat man, as he says. Mm. So, um, is, so it's kind of like, a, it's another DPH subreddit, but it's kind of, uh, so people share memes and trip reports and stuff like that, but it's an effort to, uh, to, uh, to please the hat man. So this is where the cult starts, is it? This is where the cult of hat man kind of has its origin. Is this where the origin, I don't, you tell me, let's get, let's keep going. I'll let you tell the story. I'm sure we can cover many of these points as you tell the story now, but. Let's go into this character and, and just how far it goes. I'll let, I'll let you go. Let's just go. I'm sure you have plenty of things to say about it. For, for F.A. For, for F.A. Costello, yeah, and the whole, the cult, that kind of... You're, you're, uh, you're... Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, like I said, I think a bit of rain has just messed up the sure. signal. <laughs> I mean, it will come back in a second, but... Um, I'll let you just tell the story now of the F.A. Costello, the 700 Club, and let's just let's just get into this cult of the Hat Man, uh, shall we? And I'll let you just, uh, I'll let you go. I'll let you go and tell this. We can cover many of the points here now, I think, in the last uh, section, um, just by you telling the story of, of, of the Hat Man and, and the people who follow him. Let's go. Okay, so r slash I love DPH, like I said, created for the, for the Hat Man. It was created by F.A. Costello. So I think Costello is this sort of online personality. Um, there is debate on whether he's satire or whether he actually believes these things. I kind of feel like he actually believes these things because um, he's written a whole book on it. I mean, he's so dedicated to it. He makes videos on it. He makes posts about it. And he claims, you know, uh, he claims that the hat man is the Lord. You know, he'll call, he'll constantly call the hat man the Lord. You know, he'll, he'll, he, um, he uh everything he does is about pleasing the hat man and he claims that in order to give your soul to the hat man you take dph right uh, that's his belief system i'm not saying what it is i'm just saying that that's what he believes mm -hmm. and, uh, um so th that's where that is from and he has a more secret club which we'll talk about a little later but uh yeah he's obsessed with with the hat man everything he does is to appease to appease the hat man um and the secret club we'll talk about you have to you have to supposedly according to him you have to take dph you have to go ask the hat man yourself for permission to be in this club so um i try to get in the club personally as i you know i stated in my video i try to get in it um because um i do have a hat man tattoo so not related to getting into the club i just have the tattoo. And, uh, okay. and I try to use it, like, hey, look, I have a hat man tattoo, and will you let me in type of thing? And uh, he never responded to me, even though I did get an email that was uh, that I think was him. Because, uh, and I didn't see it because it went straight to my spam folder, but it said um, it was from the hat man something. It was some very protected email. And he said, uh, he said, is thou ready? Is thou, uh, uh, I forgot what he said, but... I could tell what was him because that, that's how he speaks. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to get into the club for, uh, you know, uh, for journalism. I want to get in there and, and I want to make a video out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm constantly, I'm, I'm asking around to see if I can, someone can get me in the club and, um, you know, I'll make a video on that. I think you may have just um, lost your position in that club by saying that with me right now live, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think, I think it sounds to me like uh, this cult leader who speaks like a priest of some kind um, doesn't want people in there who may, who may expose what he's truly up to. And this is the thing about evil. It likes to work in the darkness. You know, it likes to work in shadows and remain hidden. And that's where its power kind of is. Uh, so I don't know if you'll ever get into that club. I hope you do. I'd like I'd like you to do a, a deep dive into what's going on behind the scenes there. But that that sounds insane. So this guy's created a full religion basically in his own mind, worshiping the Hat Man, and he believes. Yeah. So he believes what you said there is, if you take 
these things, DPH, you are giving your soul to the hat man. Is that what he believes? Exactly. That's it. That's. Hmm. So anybody who's just taken it, let's say, for hay fever purposes, are they also under his belief system now eternally damned to go to the hat man's pocket universe in death? Is that what happens now? That's a question I have for him, you know, and, I, and I've reached out to him on Reddit trying to get his attention. And I say, you know, uh, Epic Estello, like, you know, let's let's uh, let's make a video. And, um, you know, a lot of people reach out to me. So I'm trying to get into to it, obviously, just to, you know, make a video. I want a video out of that. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's what he that's what he believe. he has a whole Bible. He has a whole Bible that I just found out about yesterday. I didn't oh, know this. Oh, wow. And he wrote a Bible. And it's all about worshiping the hat man and demon worship, according to um, according to uh, the person who commented it. They let me know about it. Hmm. All right. The plot thickens. Then, yeah, this sounds like some someone needs to do some kind of deep dive in uh, investigative journalism into this this hidden cult. Definitely. Um, best of luck with that. Keep me posted <laughs> with where you get in with that, because this Hatman character for me personally, oh yeah, is is a, is a personal thing. Because I myself have have met the Hatman. Um, me and thousands of other people around around the world have met the Hatman. You know, um, and it, it's I can only describe it as an encounter with true evil. You know, um, in terms of spiritual experiences. You know, I I was chased by the Hatman within a dream. Um, I have a full video dedicated to breaking down every single aspect of that experience. And it was from that dream I went on to discover a book by an author called Heidi Hollis, which basically was a compilation of Hatman experiences from other people. And it turns out my experience wasn't unique. Loads of people have had shadow entity encounters with this Hatman personage. And I've kind of made it my own mission to figure out who the hell is this guy? Or men? Are there many? Are there many hat men? Is it one hat man? Or there, is there a, a legion of hat men in some respects? And I've, my research has led me down to some deep dives to secret societies and their own veneration of hat man characters. The, um, for example, the, uh, the Grand Worshipful Master of a Freemason Lodge is the only one allowed to wear a black top hat. Um, so there's something about um, leadership and evil and the, the the demonic realm and something to do with hats it's very it's very bizarre and all connected so when i saw your video here explaining about this there's now this underground cult of the hat man linked to taking copious amounts of benadryl and that just alarm bell started ringing in my mind that people are now openly seeking this thing out when decades ago you know when this when i first uh, found this people were actively trying to avoid this thing you know, like it was the worst possible thing to happen to you yeah. to, to have to deal with this character. And for, from the descriptions you gave, it sounds like the Hatman has his own dimension, his own realm of some kind. Um, shall we? Shall we get into that? Shall we start going into this? Yeah. I'll let you. I'll let you roll with it, and you explain to me yeah. what you know about the Hatman, and share with me your own opinions on the Hatman as well. Let's just let's just get into this because we know so little about him. Any any information is welcome to anybody listening. I'm sure. Like so, let's go. Let's. What have you got? Yeah. Um. So the reason I'm um I have a you know I'm so fascinated with the Hat Man is because um, when I was a kid I had a own encounter. You know, so I, I was I had a bedroom with my with my parents. I shared a bedroom. And, They'd always be in the living room watching TV, and 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 I'd go to sleep, you know, because I'd have to school the next day, and I'd have to be somewhere around seven to nine years old. I don't remember, but I remember being awake in bed, and I couldn't fall asleep. And I remember just next to me, just seeing this guy in a trench coat with a hat, and I remember thinking it was my dad, and I remember thinking, like, you know, saying like, "Dad," you know, calling out for him, and and nothing. I'm like, "Dad." nothing you know i start reaching out i'm halfway off my bed reaching out trying to touch this thing and i'm calling out like dad you know i'm kind of getting like frustrated and my actual dad comes in the room i was alone in the room my dad comes into the room and he's like uh he's like yeah like what's up and i'm like oh i thought you were right here you know and um that's 
so that's what, so I didn't know this was the hat, man. I didn't know anything about this. Um, later on, as I, you know, started looking into the paranormal and I started just becoming more fatuated with it. Um, that's when I figured out that, you know, the hat man exists and I'm like, Oh, that's exactly what I saw as a kid. And so that's why I even wanted to make a video in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I also have a kind of personal, uh, interest in, in the hat man, you know, um, so that's that's where that comes from. I, I don't I'm not I don't subscribe to the whole like um I think it's interesting that he's seen by DPH users. Uh there's a lot of spiritual beliefs about the hat man when it comes to Benadryl. Like, you know, they think that um Ariel, as we'll get into in a bit, they think that that's where he lives. It's a dimension that you can get to through high levels of of DPH. Um and uh, there's something to it. I mean, people really do see him on, you know sleep paralysis paranormal places and and obviously benadryl um and i just think it's crazy that there are people that worship and and you know do that but um but yeah i have a personal interest in heaven as well yeah well i find most people who talk about the hat man are not just talking about him for fun that most people have had the experience which leads you to this it's like it's like um the dark tower series where i think um you're, you're forever chasing after this black figure that's always going off into the distance <laughs> it feels it feels like that's what it is you're always, you're always chasing after this guy trying to figure out what he is and then as soon as you think you have him pegged suddenly you find out uh, people in benadryl are talking to him as well so it becomes a something else you know that's the way i feel about this character i'm actually talking to the author of that book heidi hollis on sunday I managed to get an interview with her because I want her opinion on what it is as well. And she probably comes at it from a completely different angle. But uh, as far as a prominent expert on the subject who's been swimming in Hatman research for, for over a decade, she's the closest thing I've found. Uh, so I'm interested to see what her view on the whole thing is, thing is as well. And again, I'm interested to find out what yours is. So let's, uh, let's talk about, um, I mean, it says here, the 700 Club, Staz Constantine and star brother so do you want to cover them first before we get into the aerial stuff and uh we'll just expound on what those are first and then we'll get into the uh, the other realm yeah so staff constantine he's a um one of the main replication artists so if you go and look at videos on replications he's kind of the the main one that's how, that's how he got his notoriety is through making these videos uh, that replicate the trips of, of Benadryl. Turns out, um, so I ended up reaching out to the 700 Club, and, and as I mentioned in the video, I'm the only channel that's ever reached out to them. And uh, they're a completely different Discord. You know, so there's two things there's a 700 Club as like a you know, the mile high club, you know, type of thing, where mm -hmm. if you take 700 milligrams of Benadryl or more, you're in the 700 club you know it's kind of like a uh a badge of honor you know mm -hmm. um but then there is the 700 club discord and so they so the name came out of kind of making fun of the evangelical evangel i can't even say that word that show you know it's like a like a very religious show and um that's where they got their name and uh you know that discord was really for a long time just grounds for grooming children basically mm -hmm. so it was it was the these these guys that would you know um um invite you know 13 year old 15 year old girls and boys and um pretty much brainwash them and you know have them uh you know you know, do a lot of things do drugs and you know i, I know that this guy stas constantine he he's he was one of the he was the first guy to start this discord and he uh he provided pcp for like the 13 year old girl like he was a pretty messed up guy people don't know this people um uh, my channel is actually the first to ever really expose that because to a lot of people he's a coveted member of dph community the dph community's history with replications mm -hmm. they just knew him for his videos they didn't know that he was like a you know a pedophile and that he was went to jail for this kind of stuff and um uh you know so uh, reaching out through the set to the 700 club discord they opened up about this history because it's way different people now that they're, they're nothing to do with with what it was um they just they kept the 700 club name because you know that's 
700 Club is kind of integral to the whole lore of, of TPH community. Mm -hmm. But um, they opened up about the whole history of it. It's very much pedophile. It's very much, uh, you know, drugs and unaliving and, and uh, a lot of crazy things in that that um, have a whole video that we're going to work on. Um, they're a whole different group of people there now. And they're no nonsense. You, you cannot play any dumb stuff in there. Uh, you know, they, they, they ban you and it, it, you know, they're more of a resource group now. They, they're about overcoming addiction. They don't promote things like that. And they just kind of keep it as like the, the name. I get why they do it, you know, but um, yeah, they're still around. It's just different people now. Way to, no, none of the original members are there. Right. So it kind of became more of a, a stopgap for people to uh, find a way to get out now. Is that they try to rebrand the image to be more, we're here to help people with Benadryl addiction rather than actually um, promote it anymore. Is that basically what happened? Exactly. Yeah, they're all about like, um, they don't promote it on there. Um, if you go on there, it's just, uh, it's just literally chatting and memes and um, they don't play anything. You can't be, uh, you know, uh, you can't be promoting things like that. They're very no, no nonsense. So, um, right. and it's pretty cool that they opened up their whole story um, for me to actually have, you know, all of this stuff is very niche to find. Mm -hmm. You can't just find it on Reddit, you know? Um, so they, they, and they're very like, they have a lot of documentation about all this and, and very, uh, um, they archive the history of everything pretty well. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Cause this is kind of like the dark internet history uh, culture, you know? So, um, they've archived that really well all right cool well well yeah it's nicer than that they actually reached out to you and gave gave you their honest view and everything and what they are and where they are now so yeah i mean it sounds like a, a secret society in, in a way isn't it that's kind of what it is it's kind of like a an online version of a of a secret club members only um which got which got violently out of hand and like most secret societies do they they turn to a pedophilia for some reason it seems to be the way most of them end up going um right so let, let's move let's move on to a tier six then let's talk about the star brother and then we can get into um ariel as well yeah star brother he's just made a bunch of stick figure comic uh comics and uh people really loved his comics they were always funny they were very dark and funny like that was his thing it's just to kind of make fun of like the strangeness and the darkness of dph trips through comic stick figures mm -hmm. okay so let's get on to ariel then the 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 realm of the hat man um what's the law surrounding all of this fill me in this, this is fascinating to me okay so ariel is pretty much the darkest trip you can have without actually dying that's what ariel is um it's beyond delirium this is like um this is to the point where you you've completely disconnected from, from everything you're not you know you could be in your room and think you're in a grocery store um type of thing um ariel is it's very interesting that there's so many things in delirium that are that are trippy you know people see uh benadryl tv like um meaning they'll be able to stare at a, at a tv that's turned off and be able to see a full-blown show created through this benadryl experience they'll be able to look at their phone and go to websites that don't exist that's still leading up to to ariel so delirium is uh it entails a lot of interesting creepy weird things that we, we haven't talked about but um ariel is the darkest trip or the strongest trip you can have without actually dying. And so here, um, very few people have actually gone to this because you pretty much are right there with dying. So the people who have come back from this are always messed up. They're always uh, some permanent brain damage. You know, a lot of the times they have, uh, they come back, uh, you know, psychosis or they'll come just permanent stuff. Um, but in this sort of realm, uh, they claim the hat man is always visible. He, he's always there. They claim that um, people have talked to the hat man in in this in this uh, in this space. They claim that he seems to be in charge of other shadow people. Mm -hmm. uh, other shadow people sort of seem to fear him or listen to him or obey him. Um, uh, yeah, and just to go back to the guy Efe Costello, who kind of has that 
you know, cult-like following. He believes that this is the home of Hatman, and he believes that when we die, Ariel is where we're going to go. He thinks that that's where we're going. That's where we go when we die. And so you better please and appease the Hatman because you're gonna you're gonna end up in Ariel. And if he's not happy with you, then who knows? You know. Hmm. That is a dark, twisted, weird lore, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, what what gets to me is is this idea that you know this this F A Costello is adamant that when you die, you go to this place, this aerial realm, um, in which the Hatman is like a leader or general over the shadow people in some way, um, and that's an interesting way to describe it because that's basically what my research has led me to understand is that the Hatman does appear to be some kind of if there's a hierarchy to the demonic realm. Um, then the shadow entities are pretty much the bottom of the rung, or let's say just the demons are, are quite low down. Um, but the Hatman is like a general or a lieutenant of some way. I've definitely already made that comparison and analogy myself. Um, but recently I've kind of considered him to be a, a bit more like an accountant or a lawyer of the spiritual realm. He kind of deals with the business of your soul. You know, he deals with the nitty gritty paperwork contracts stuff. No, it's this idea that you sell your soul to the hat man. Um, it's very in line with him being a form of businessman in the sense that, you know, he makes the deals with you in the spirit realm. For, um, you know, he's the one who creates the soul contracts and makes those bonds. And he's the one who comes to collect when it's time to deliver, you know. Um, he's kind of like a, a glorified lawyer of the spirit realm. <laughs> That's kind of what I seem to have deduced him to be and this story that this F.A. Costello's come up with does kind of fit into that. I personally, um, as a spiritual person, I don't hold him as actually being a god, a true god in any way. I think that's a lie. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you want to believe that this is a real realm in some way with a real entity there, I think it's just a matter of um, him being just a high-ranking demon rather than an actual god. But I can also, I also understand, um, and I was just talking to the author Gary Wayne yesterday, and he was explaining how it seems like a lot of the fallen angels who created demons did create pocket dimensions to put the spirits of the demons into during the flood and the destruction before re-releasing them after the flood. So this concept of being able to create specific dimensions that are different from others, from the imaginations of a demon, does fit into this character of the hat man himself has created his own dark universe you know and he has lured people to it basically where he is the god of it in a sense because it's his realm you know it's his universe but in comparison to the whole of creation it's just a tiny crappy little pocket-sized pocket realm you know it's his own little uh his own little kingdom which is actually small in comparison to the larger whole and uh, maybe it's true that you know when fa costello dies Maybe he will go to Ariel. <laughs> Maybe that's where he's, where he will go. You know, but I don't know about the rest of us. Uh, what do you What do you think? I don't know. What do you... Yeah, it's, a, it's a far out theory. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't subscribe to his thinking at all. I, I think it's interesting, and uh, that's why I do want to do a video on him and get into the club to figure out the truth. I mean, is he being satire about everything? Mm-hmm. there's people who think so there's people who think that he's just joking and kidding about everything and it's all one big act but you know i can say that there are people who really follow him and believe what he believes and um, i've seen some of those in, in my comments you know like when i mentioned uh the hammond tattoo which by the way i got um, um you know in march i believe or february march um and i got it before my original video even took off and i got it because i was like oh i'm a paranormal enthusiast you know i like like you know um, paranormal entities i never saw anyone with a hat tattoo about the tattoo um, and some guy commented and he said did you ask the hat man permission for for you to be able to get a tattoo because if you did it bad things are gonna happen and i'm like uh you know <laughs> like it, it's it's outlandish i don't buy into all that there are definitely people who subscribe to his thinking, and, and uh, so whether he's satire or not, he is making waves and, and getting people on board with this. You know. Yeah, well, it, it is hard usually to judge these people's true intentions. I've met a few in my, in my cult leaders in my time being on this channel, 
Um, and you know, I, I, I had this inner battle in my own head. You know, I, I, I had this inner battle in my own head. Like, is this guy, is this satire? Does he know what he is? He's just a huge troll, you know, but at the same time I had to deal with his legion. Right. I had to deal with his legions and armies of, um, devotees i guess is the way to call it you know who have fallen for the lies hook line and sinker and you do find cult leaders are usually these 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 charismatics aren't they um charismatic charlatans but uh it sounds to me like this guy does actually believe what he's saying because only because it lines up with what people do genuinely believe about the spirit realm already even outside of of uh dph thought realms you know um these entities do exist in other thought uh you know, in other forums shall we say you know there's uh the, the hat man is not specific to the benadryl people like i said it's it's um a highly talked about subject in the christian community and even in the new age community as well it's it's a it's an entity that goes across platforms and across belief systems so i would be inclined to believe that if he, if he is this obsessed with this character like the hat man he may actually be the genuine article he might actually believe himself you know um, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, we're living in an age now where people openly worship the demonic and to have churches and cults dedicated to them isn't actually that new. So uh, I, I would I would air you to be on, on the side of caution with dealing with these people. It, only because, not because maybe what they're, not because they are right necessarily, but because they believe they are right. <laughs> and that, that's more dangerous often, you know. And uh, they could they could consider you an enemy, and I just obviously you just got to, you've got to be careful. You've really got to be careful with this. But uh, no story was ever worth chasing that didn't come with a cost. You know, <laughs> I suppose is what we're going out there. Um, but yeah, if you, yeah, keep me posted on your journey, and uh, just be careful with these people. Um, but yeah, that, that this is this is getting dark. This is getting deep. <laughs> what have we got left on the uh, on the tier? Then we get we're almost at the bottom of the iceberg here, aren't we? We're in the black. We're in the black abyss now. Um, what have we got? We talked about the hat man. We got DPH lovers secret club. What's this? Is this this more than the seven hundred club? Are we getting deeper here? Yeah. So the the seven hundred club is is a uh, sort of. You know, it, I wouldn't say they're even that dark anymore. The, the history is dark and there's a lot of pedophilia in that, but they're sort of, now it's just, it's kind of just a community, a resource group. Um, there's there's very little darkness or mis, like, you know, thing about that. Um, but with the r slash DPH Lovers Club, so this is the secret club that I'm trying to get into for a video. Right. Um, obviously, this is an online club. It's not like you meet up with them in the woods or something. It is online. Um, Apparently, the only way you can get into it is by taking DPH and asking the hat man for permission to get into this club. That's that's what he says. Um, so I try to message him and say, hey, you know, I have a hat man tattoo, like, you know, so can I get in type of thing? You know, he, he didn't respond. But like I said, I did get an email where he said, is thou ready? I, forgot, I, I, I should pull it up somewhere. But uh, he, I'm pretty sure it's, po I'm positively sure it's him because only he talks like that with the with the thou is the thou ready is is you know like he talks like that and uh, um you know so I don't know the contents of this club I don't know what they what they're about I'm trying to get into it because when I do I need to make a video and uh, um, and I you know hopefully somebody can help me get into it you know. I'll make a video about it. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Like I said good luck with that, and just be just be careful. So the secret, uh, the lovers' secret club—that's the one you try and get into, right? Okay, well, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> that's all I can say. It's not something I would want to do. Um, but yeah, good luck with that. So, uh, what's this? Uh, four twenty chans delete. Then is this uh, more forums talking about these things, or is this getting even darker? This is one of the original um, threads. Um, the original online thread is probably Arrowid, but um, 420chan slash del slash, that's the Delirian board. So people would talk about Delirian, such as DPH, Datura, and stuff in this thread. So it was kind of like early Reddit, basically. Um, even though Reddit was kind of around that time, too. But um, I guess the reason it's here is because um, it was more wild than, than it is on reddit today you know this would be constantly flooded with cp and gore and um just a bunch of videos of death and, and, and 
on the livings and stuff like that. So that's why this is on here. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Right. So uh, speeding along now, we've been talking for a while. Let's let's uh, let's keep going with the rest of these, and then we'll have a bit of a sum- summarize, I think. But uh, so we've got overdose trip reports. Cedric Lightbury. Do you want to go to them too, and then we're on the final tier. Yeah. So Cedric Lightbury is the guy who coined the 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 word aerial to describe that place. Right. Uh, he claims the whole the story. The story is that he um he took I forget what the dose is. Definitely in the like one. I I think I want to say two grams of BPH. Just some crazy amount. And he claims that he encountered. And he asked the hat man if he's going to die. The hat man just kind of didn't respond and, you know, just stood there. And he claims that the hat man said, don't go to Ariel. And then just vanished. And then he ended up uh, spending the rest of his trip talking to his dead uh, dead relative, his dead father, I believe. Uh, which this isn't uncommon at high doses to see your dead relatives. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, so he, But he claims that that stuck with him. The Don't go to Ariel. Don't go to Ariel. So that's kind of the beginning of where people began to associate the Hatman with Ariel, Ariel in general. Right. Interesting. Interesting. So overdose trip reports. Um, I'm guessing these are people explaining how they went really far and had an awful time, or are these are these where people die. What was what are these ones about? Yeah, that's it's both. I mean, um, this is just sort of like the the. I guess the reason it's on here is because, um, you know, overdoses don't stop people from doing it again. You know, you'll mm-hmm. constantly see people overdosing and then they'll be back and have another dose or, you know, uh, so this, this is at, at this point, they kind of just don't care um, what happens. So that's why it's there. That's sad. That's sad to hear that people would still go back even after almost dying. Yep. Yeah. So now we're at the final tier then, tier seven, permanent brain damage, uh, schizophrenia, dementia, and permatrip. Shall we go into this? I'll let you summarize on this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, permanent brain damage. A lot of people... Sorry, that's my dog. No, it's okay. Um, people um, have a lot of speech problems. After they abuse uh, DPH, um, a lot of memory problems, um, especially memory, a lot of cognitive, you know, they can't, um, uh, you know, control their body the same. Uh, as I mentioned, early dementia is like uh, really common with, with this. So uh, it's been proven that high doses, DPH can actually shrink your brain. And obviously, there's no coming back from that. Um, a lot of people who, who you know, engage in this, even this isn't enough to deter them. It's pretty crazy that they get to that point where it's like permanent brain damage. And they almost laugh at this. You know, they, they laugh at permanent brain damage as if it's like, oh, well, you know, I guess that's what it takes to, you know, to you know, hmm. which is pretty crazy. But um, if you're taking that for delirium purposes, you, more than likely there will be some brain damage. I mean, that's the idea that people just go, go with that as though it's a perfectly <laughs> monstrous zombies. Okay. Exactly. You know, and they, they still continue to do it, you know, so I guess it's just more of the same, isn't it? I mean, that, that pretty much sums up your video, though. I think we've just you've just gone through every point there. I mean. And to be honest, this whole stream has just been one bad connection after another. I do wonder if I'm being messed with by the hat man. <laughs> it's good speculation. Who knows? But um, yeah, th- perhaps people don't want this information to be out. I don't know. But uh, I've, I'm looking at the chat now and people are complaining, saying this has been really bad in terms of uh, c- cutting in and out and quality. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, I can hear you just fine. Um, so I don't know why that's happening to them. It's kind of annoying. Um, and it says my internet is actually quite decent. So something's going on on YouTube's end. I don't I don't know what it is. Um, but hopefully, um, I've had this happen before. 
the after, after the stream is uploaded and we're done, YouTube kind of adds missing stuff. It kind of all comes in the out in the wash and everything's clear afterwards. But the live stream is, is usually a mess. Um, so hopefully this should be okay. But if not, I would like to, would like to get you back again sometime to talk about other things because this is uh, this has been fun. This has been really fun. Oh yeah, I mean it's 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 uh, fascinating, you know. There's there's a whole world uh, from all in that film, so it's not a it's it's everywhere. I mean, think about how that world is available to you. You just go to the gas station. That's scary. Well, yeah, I, like I said, I, I couldn't believe when I saw your video and I actually watched it. At first, I was like, "What is this?" You know, <laughs> I was a bit like, skeptical about it, and then then after at the end of it, I was like, "I have to email this guy. Like, I have to I have to talk to him, and I have to know what you know. Where did he get, where did he get all this information from exactly? And like, what, where is he going with this? And <laughs> I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see where you go with it. I really am. Um, I'll be I'll be a keen follower of your work. Um, and like I said, man, I, I'd love to have you back on again in the future to, uh, share anything extra that happens maybe in a few months time. If you do manage to get into that club, come and tell me what's going on. You know, I've got a bit of a niche crew here who like to listen in. So maybe they, <laughs> they'll want to know too, but yeah, this is, um, this has been a crazy ride. And um, so anyone, anyone listening, go and watch this video. I've got the link in the link in the description. Uh, go check out his other work as well. You've, you've done many other things other than this. You're quite a new channel, aren't you? And like I said, he's, you've just blown up all of a sudden. Um, and and you deserve it. So yeah. hats, hats off to you. <laughs> you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, definitely. I'll definitely be back. I mean, if you want me back, I'll be back. Uh, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not done with this. There's, uh, I mean, still, whether I get into the club or not, I still want to make a video on it. Yeah, um, I just saw the PD, got the PDF for his Bible that he wrote, the Hammond Bible. I'm looking into that. I'm looking into everything he's uh, he's he's you know doing. Just to be clear, I'm not. I don't follow this guy. I don't adhere to his beliefs. I'm clearly doing it because um, you know I think that this would be an interesting video for YouTube. And, and I'm, to me, it's about making the best video that I can and making it the most interesting video on the internet. That's my goal. <laughs> and and if I have to go and, and, and talk to him personally, then that's what it takes. And I like to do things like that. Um, so whatever it takes to make a, a, a you know, a video that's going to kill. And, uh, and, uh, um, Next week, I should have a DXM iceberg coming on or a DXM rabbit hole, uh, you know, type of thing. So I'm doing that whole thing. And, and uh, yeah, you know, I'll have some more stuff that, that, that gets a little deeper in there. I look forward to that one. I'll be checking that out. And uh, yeah, good luck with getting creating the most interesting video ever. Uh, I'm ho I'm hoping my Nephilim clown stuff will uh, mm -hmm. will try and beat you on that one. But uh, there's nothing wrong with a bit of healthy competition. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that's that's good fun, man. It's been it's been good fun. Um, do you have any um final thoughts or any any socials you want to share with everybody before we call it a night here? Yeah, no. Um, you know, just definitely don't don't investigate but don't try dph for yourself i don't even take i wouldn't even take it for allergies to be honest um, just because like i said there's studies that show that even at normal dose uh, usage you can kind of mess yourself up in the long run um, and, uh, so definitely it's not something it's not a kitty drug you know it's just i'm surprised it's overlooked so don't, don't look into trying things out for yourself um i don't think it's worth it at all and uh you know, nothing really on show except for like for my channel, Cryptid Candy. So if you guys want to check that out, and hopefully you guys follow. And if not, then it's cool. But you know, I'm I'm gonna be coming in, and and I always keep the viewer in mind that I try to keep you guys, give you what you want. You know. Excellent. Well, like I said, I'll be uh, I'll be checking in with you in a few months' time to get you back on to keep us updated with your work. And obviously, I'm sure you'll be creating other videos I'd like to talk about as well because uh, your work is thorough, and I like that. That's what I like to see. And uh, like I said, um. This is my channel is predominantly a Christian channel, um, but I'm not here to push anything on anybody in that respect. So, you know, I'm happy to have anybody with any views on and that your work is just it's just it's invaluable to, to everyone's research. So uh, thanks for doing what you do. Thanks for coming and talking to me. It's wonderful. I think the people enjoyed it in the chat. 
And uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll be in touch. And to everybody in the chat, thanks for listening. And as always, God bless.